With the bad news we just had about the Supreme Court basically refusing to hear any of the qualified immunity cases where police officers can get away with anything that will be crimes for the rest of us, basically just because they're police officers, it's nice to see a case where this uh, starts to uh, become pulled back. This isn't the Supreme Court, but it is an appeals court, and they did strip immunity both from the cops and, this is significant, from the police department too. So that's why I wanted to to cover this. So, um, check my other coverage on qualifying immunity to see, you know, how it came out, you know, through the courts. I've covered it in the podcast. I have a video or two on it. And, and keep in mind that the, <laughs> the, the catch 22 in there is that there has to be a precedent for that exact situation, but you don't get a precedent for that exact situation until you can get it through the courts. So how are you going to do that? And I mentioned a case where uh, the, uh, they said that this case wasn't a precedent because in the precedent, the defendant was lying down. And in that case, he was sitting with his arms laced behind his back. Like, what, what, what difference does that make? But I mean, they'll, they'll look for any reason to deny immunity. So this is big. Um, this is the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. They stripped the, uh, qualifying immunity of a couple of Ohio cops and also of the city of Euclid, Ohio. And so, well, let's just go in and talk about what happened. So Lamar Wright was uh, an unarmed black man conversing with his friend in his SUV. They were being surveilled by plainclothes cops. They were looking out for drug activity. And of course, if you've got two black men talking in a car for any length of time, well, it must be drug activity. So according to the report, after Wright pulled out of the driveway, officers Flagg and Williams followed him. He turned right onto Wrecker Avenue and then left onto East 212th Street. The officers maintained that in both turns, Wright failed to use a signal. The fiend. Well, we're going to have to step in on this. Of course, there's no dash cam footage to confirm that that's what happened. How convenient. So, Wright pulled into a second driveway to answer a text message from his girlfriend. While Wright texted in the SUV, the officers exited their vehicle, drawing their guns, of course, because they're black men. What are they going to do? One of the men caught Wright's eye when he glanced up from his texting. Now, remember, these are plain clothes. Uh, in his side mirror, Wright could see this man dressed in dark clothing with a gun pointed at the SUV. Believing he was about to be robbed, Wright dropped his cell phone in the center console and threw the car in reverse. I love how plainclothes cops just think you're supposed to magically, supposed to, like, telepathically figure out that they're cops, you know. But, uh, I mean, this was a high crime area, as, uh, the story points out. Who wrote this story? Oh, dang, I was rolling the wrong thing. Who wrote this story? It was Tim Cushing. Okay, so. He was in a high crime area, and that's what officers used to establish a reasonable suspicion for warrantless stops and searches, but since he was in a high crime area, it's reasonable that he was expecting that he was going to be robbed, and so. Anyway, it goes on. Glancing to his left, he saw another armed man, but this time he noticed a badge. Wright heard the man yell, shut the car off, open the door. Now realizing they were police officers, he started complying, put the car in park, put his hands up, and it's interesting it says, these events are corroborated by the body cam footage. Oh, now we have footage! Well, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. Uh, Flag stood beside the driver's door. Williams was next to the front passenger door. Both officers holstered their guns. And Cushing is making all this, uh, the, these quotes interspersed with it from the Blue Lives Matter people. Oh, just comply and nothing will ha bad will happen to you. Just comply. Nothing bad will happen. Flag yanked the driver's side door open and demanded that Wright shut off the vehicle. Wright complied and then raised his hands once more. Flag grabbed Wright's left wrist, twisting his arm behind his back. He attempted to gain control of Wright's right arm in order to handcuff him. He was unsuccessful. Wright repeatedly exclaimed that the officer was hurting him, to which Flag responded, Let me see your hand. He then tried to pull Wright from the vehicle, but Wright had uh, difficulty getting out. Now, the officers had no way of knowing this in fairness, but Wright had just undergone surgery for diverticulitis. 
and that's staples in his stomach and a colostomy bag in his abdomen. Though the officers apparently could not see the bag in staples, these items prevented Wright from easily moving from his seat. Wright placed his right hand on the center console of the car to better situate his torso to exit the car. By this point, Williams had moved over to stand behind Flagg on the driver's side. Williams responded to Wright's hand movement by reaching around Flagg to pepper spray Wright at point blank range. So he's reaching around it. Yeah, I try, I'm trying to visualize it. It's like, it sounds like a really crowded scene. But. Flagg simultaneously deployed his taser into Wright's abdomen. The besieged detainee finally managed to exit the car with his hands up. He was then face down on the ground where he explained to the officers that he had a poop bag on. I had to censor this. This is what YouTube is making us do, apparently, because now apparently we're back in the 1960s where we have to be careful not to say the wordy dirds or else you'll get demonetized and might even have a terms of service violation. Yeah. This would actually be acceptable on basic cable, but it's not acceptable on YouTube. What is happening? What has happened to the progress we've been making these past 30 years? I don't know. Anyway, it's a little diversion, diversion but getting back to it. Two cops versus a compliant man with a colostomy bag, all caught on video, and all of it unjustified. And the cops tried to make it appear justified as they do talking it up on their body cams. As the body cam continued to record, Flagg made various arguably self-serving statements, including that Wright was reaching like he had a effing gun. Uh, Techter censored that one. Why they censored the F word and not the S word, I have no idea. I have no idea what the rules are anymore. I have no clue. None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. They're just words, people. Calm the F down. They're just words. And that Flagg had been afraid that Wright was going to shoot him. But of course, that's what they always say, isn't it? You know, gotta, gotta cover your butts. But Wright had no gun and also no drugs. But they arrested him anyway because at that point, what else are you gonna do? And the cops actually admitted they had nothing. It says the officers conceded they did not have probable cause to arrest Wright until after they believed he was resisting and that they had not seen Wright engage in any illegal activity prior to the arrest apart from his alleged failures to use his turn signal. That's one thing that's always driven me kind of crazy. There's the resisting arrest thing. Um, I'm always interested in seeing a case where Someone is arrested for resisting arrest, but not arrested for anything else. It's like, well, wait a minute. What were you arresting them for originally that they were resisted? I would think that would be an element. But then what do I know? The courts keep saying, nope, 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 that's irrelevant, that's irrelevant. People have tried that. They're like, okay, I was resisting arrest. What was I being arrested for originally that I was resisting? Oh, that, that's irrelevant. I would think that's a crucial element, but don't rely on the courts. Do not rely on the courts. Um, so Wright spent five hours in jail. The officers demanded the hospital perform a CT scan, apparently hoping he's got some drugs stuffed in there or something. The hospital refused after consulting with their legal department. Uh, yeah, you can't just do that. You know, you, you have to have, you know, a warrant, a probable cause. You know. Wright was in jail for five hours for one reason, to be subjected to a full body scan, the scan the hospital had refused to do. Again, nothing was found. Several months later, the oops, I missed one, the BS obstruction and resisting arrest charges were dropped. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Wright had to prove the city was responsible for these officers' actions. To do so, he needed to show the police department and its ultimate overseers had something to do with the brutality he experienced. So this is where you go into the training. And this training apparently had a link to a Chris Rock routine called How Not to Get Your Butt Kicked by the Police, only it's not the word butt. Again, I don't know what the rules are. The video shows numerous clips of multiple officers beating African-American suspects. During the video, Rock says such things as, People in the black community often wonder that we might be a victim of police brutality. As a public service, the Chris Rock Show proudly presents this educational video. Have you ever been face-to-face -face with a police officer and wondered, is he about to kick my butt? 
Well, wonder no more. If you follow these easy tips, you'll be fine. We all know what happened to Rodney King, but Rodney wouldn't have gotten his butt kicked if he had just followed this simple tip. When you see flashing police, kites, flashing police lights in your mirror, stop immediately. Everybody knows if the police have to come and get you, they're bringing a butt kicking with them. If you have to give a friend a ride, get a white friend. A white friend can be the difference between a ticket and a bullet in the butt. Now, I've seen the routine. It's a funny routine. It's really funny. But this is police training. They're actually showing this in police training. They said it was harmless fun and to lighten the mood, but yeah. Wright didn't resist, but he st everything still happened exactly as Chris Rock said it would. And Chris w Rock was pointing out that, hey, this is a bad thing that the police are going to do to you if you're black. And then here are the police proving him right. So, now there's a PowerPoint presentation containing this graphic. The best defense is a good proactive beating, one that included phrase, protecting and serving the poop out of you. I think poop was uh, censored on this covering a different word. But, yeah, uh, that, that's a graphic. Someone actually made it. Someone actually drew those figures in that position. So, yeah, what's going on there? Okay, so the expert witness, who was put on the stand to explain it, couldn't explain it. That Sergeant Morosky testified that he did not believe that the graphic conveys that the Euclid Police Department beats the hell out of people. But he didn't know what other message could possibly be taken away from the image. The end result is this. No qualified immunity for the officers, including immunity for false arrest and unreasonable detention claims and the city itself must stand trial for its failure to ensure its police department didn't instruct officers to beat the poop out of citizens under the guise of protecting and serving. Let's ask some reasonable jurors, says the sixth. A reasonable jury could find that the city's excessive force training regimen and practices gave rise to a culture that encouraged, permitted, or acquiesced to the use of unconstitutional excessive force, and that, as a result, such force was used on right. Therefore, we reverse the district court's grant of summary judgment on Wright's Manel claim based on failure to train or supervise. And they also say it's very troubling that the city of Euclid's law enforcement training included jokes about Rodney King, who was tased and beaten in one of the most infamous police encounters in history, and a cartoon with a message that twists the mission of police. The offensive statements and depictions in the training contradict the ethical duty of law enforcement officer to serve the community, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. So, it looks like this is a good development in this case. I mean, it's got to go back to the lower courts now. Who knows what will happen there? But it's good to see it happen this far, at least. And I kind of have a feeling that if you looked at the training materials for all sorts of other police departments, you'd see the same kind of thing. You know, it's become less and less about de-escalating conflicts and trying to prevent things like that, and more and more about how, oh, you know, puffing your chest out like you're in a movie and you got to be the big hero and take down the bad guys, and it's all a big narcissistic ego trip. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if a whole bunch of different departments had materials like this that played into that. And that's just horrible, and it's one of the things that absolutely needs to change. One of many things that needs to change about that. But That's all I have to say on this one, so thank you so very much for watching, and please hit like, share, and subscribe, and also send this video around to anyone you think might be interested in it. Please share my channel if you like it, if you think people will be interested in my other videos. And if you want to support me, you can go to donate.bogosity.tv uh, you can donate through PayPal, you can pump, become a regular subscriber at Patreon or Subscribestar, um, or you can even just give a few pennies if you want in cryptocurrency. You know, the small donations, they add up when a lot of people do them, so any amount is appreciated. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, stay strong and be free.